When I say artificial intelligence, what image comes to your mind? Unfortunately, nowadays, it's mostly through science fiction that the general public forms an image of artificial intelligences, which I will call, more succinctly, AIs. And the least we can say is that Terminators, Ex Machina and Westworld don't have much to do with the AIs that should be of concern to you, as they don't really threaten the security and peace in the world. And the same holds for Deep Blue, AlphaGo and DAL-E. These AIs may be spectacular, but they are not deployed on large scales and they do not affect world geopolitics. Today, I want to talk about the AIs that not only exist, but have already caused thousands, if not millions of deaths worldwide, and that could threaten all of humanity in the years to come. In particular, I am going to insist on the very largely superhuman power that these AIs already have in a somewhat specific sense. Namely, what I mean is that any tiny change in the behavior of these AIs will inevitably lead to dramatic upheavals, much more dramatic than a major change in the most influential human today. And just to be clear, this enormous power is not so much related to the intelligence of these AIs. In fact, the debate about this intelligence seems to me to have a completely disproportionate attention. That's why I prefer to talk about algorithms rather than about AIs. Given the danger already posed by the autonomous power of the algorithms that we are going to talk about today, the question that I think should be of concern to us is not whether AI is intelligent and definitely not whether AI is conscious. Rather, the question that I think should be discussed a lot more is how to guarantee the safety and ethics of these super powerful algorithms. And now we conclude by explaining why our Tunosol project seems absolutely critical to me if we hope to one day achieve this. And in this video, to be extremely concrete, I'm going to tell about five AIs in particular that are already shaking the world. And I bet that you will be deeply surprised by at least a few of them. Already deployed, autonomous weapons are disrupting the world order, the concept of war, and the threshold for initiating it. Indeed, autonomous drones have likely already been used in Libya, Ethiopia, and Morocco, most notably the Cargo 2, a Turkish drone capable of facial recognition to identify its targets before attacking them. Now, as is often the case when it comes to AI, there are huge semantic debates about what an autonomous weapon is. After all, guided missiles and antipersonal mines are old technologies that make trajectory and detonation decisions independently from human action. And so, if you consider that an autonomous weapon is a weapon that is autonomous, then the military industry has already been full of such weapons for a long time. In fact, the debate has an important legal dimension, since any regulation of autonomous weapons would then regulate all those destructive but now regarded as conventional weapons. Yeah, that reeks of status quo bias with a disgusting taste of, we don't know, thus we shouldn't do anything. No matter where one draws the line between automatic and autonomous weapons, experts at least seem to agree that the more autonomous the weapons, the more powerful, dangerous and potentially out of control they are. In particular, there seems to be more or less of a consensus among AI experts that the AI technologies behind autonomous weapons are very far from reliable and safe. Their hasty deployment risks leading them to often be mistargeted or even hacked and reused for very bad purposes, assuming that their use in the first place was somehow legitimate, which in practice is often far from clear. Unfortunately, the exacerbation of international geopolitical tensions and the arms race we are already witnessing drastically increase the risk of such hasty deployments. In any case, increasingly autonomous drones seem to be used more and more in armed conflicts, starting with the war in Ukraine. While Russian forces appear to be operating a device called the Kubla, Ukrainian forces have received aero-environment switchblade drones from the Americans and brimstone drones from the British. These drones are equipped with an explosive charge, can fit in a backpack and be launched from the ground. Soldiers assign an attack area and target devices, typically tanks or aircrafts. The drones will then automatically seek out targets and attempt to crash into them. 
These drones are sometimes even able to coordinate with each other to prevent the same target from being attacked by two drones at the same time. Before the war, Ukraine had already purchased and used its own war drones, namely the Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones. Very worryingly, these drones have been sold to a huge number of different actors, which include, if I am to believe Wikipedia, Qatar, Azerbaijan, Libya, Morocco, Poland, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Niger, Ethiopia and Pakistan, and potentially as well Bulgaria, Kazakhstan, Serbia, Hungary, Albania, Oman, Rwanda, Somalia, Slovakia, and Latvia. That's quite a list, and not all of the countries in this list are known to be nice. And this is precisely what makes autonomous weapons so terrifying. Even if they don't have sophisticated cognitive capabilities, these AIs are destructive. But more importantly, they are growing in number, embodied in a large number of different machines. These are AI armadas, and that's very different from AlphaGo and Ex Machina. Moreover, these autonomous weapons are under the control of governments sometimes known for their human rights abuses, for the murders, and even sometimes for the genocides. Now, some AI ethicists claim that we should not be afraid of AI because it will always remain under the control of humans. Well, what control? And more importantly, by which humans? I will not teach you anything if I tell you that North Korea is under the control of humans. Is that reassuring? The democratization of these war machines presages a terrifying future where the power games could be turned upside down and dominated much more by the fear of devastating reprisals than by compassion for those who are suffering from human rights abuses. On this subject, I invite you to watch this terrifying video which shows the emergence of a growing dilemma between demanding that dictatorships stop their human rights abuses and yielding for fear of dangerous reprisals at the risk of seeing authoritarianism being normalized throughout the world. In short, the AIs of autonomous weapons will definitely disrupt the world order. And yet, they are not the ones I am most concerned about. In 2020, an anonymous Twitter account under the name at Arthi Sharma 08 announces that he is a whistleblower putting his life at risk to publicly reveal the existence of what is perhaps the most powerful disinformation tool designed to date. This tool is TechFog, and according to Arthi Sharma 08, it is a secret application used by the BJP, the ultranationalist Hindu party of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, to consolidate its power and silence its critics. After two years of investigation, the Indian newspaper The Wire published the results of its investigation. And this investigation is terrifying. TechFog seems indeed to be a war machine capable of automating on a monumental scale all the weapons of the information and disinformation war. Astroturfing, account theft, surveillance, harassment of dissidents, and fabrication of information. Everything is automated to promote the radicalism of the BJP and the hatred towards the lower caste, Muslims and other minorities. Imagine being informed by your acquaintance that they continue to receive texts and media on their WhatsApp from you despite your number being inactive for a while. Surprisingly, all those texts and media sent in your name from a number which you no longer use are government propaganda. Imagine being a journalist with an anti-establishment views. Anything you post on social media platform garners significant response. However, you also tend to receive a lot of hate and abuse from anonymous Twitter accounts. Then you are told that these attacks on you are part of a concerted effort and someone sitting in an air-conditioned office is directing this hatred towards you without even knowing you personally. And all this being done with the help of just one app. Just imagine. One of the big issues for political parties and private companies on many social networks is to appear in the trending of the platform. If you think about this, this trending tab is simply free advertising for popular content. Political leaders in every country in the world know how important advertising is to their popularity and therefore to the security of their jobs. It is therefore not surprising that almost all political parties around the world seek to buzz 
even if it means exploiting a network of fake accounts to create the buzz. This is called astroturfing. Well, TechFog makes it possible to automate the creation of buzzes by automatically coordinating such networks of fake accounts so that they use a certain hashtag and like certain posts with this hashtag at a certain moment. This is how many biased and divisive topics such as the divinity of cows and hatred towards certain minorities have become unavoidable political topics for Indian politicians. Moreover, the abuse of fake accounts to amplify content is not limited to astroturfing. Recommendation algorithms can also be manipulated and thus be made to vastly overamplify some content boosted by the disinformation campaigns. To amplify such campaigns, in addition to enabling the automated creation of fake accounts, probably now using deep learning and GANs to create realistic face images, ID cards, and authentication videos, TechFog is also capable of stealing inactive WhatsApp accounts, thus taking control of more established accounts and thus less suspicious for moderators. Apparently, to achieve this, TechFog exploits vulnerabilities in WhatsApp similar to those that Pegasus exploited to, among other things, hack the French presidents with all the risks involved if a foreign dictator is able to blackmail the most powerful man in France. Moreover, like Pegasus, TechFog is also used to spy on targets, often dissidents and opponents of the BJP, Modi's ultranationalist political party. The government, which has become increasingly authoritarian, often abuses this power to imprison dissidents or to threaten them or their families. The surveillance of dissidents also allows TechFog to carry out automated and targeted harassment by exploiting the knowledge of their targets' secrets and even their entourage to better threaten them. This is terrifying in a country where pornographic deepfakes were used to destroy the respectability and morale of a journalist critical of the BJP. Finally, TechFog exploits language models to automatically produce huge amounts of misinformation and propaganda, especially anti-Muslim propaganda. In particular, TechFog can take articles already published in respectable medias and make misleading variants of them by changing a few words but without changing the appearance of the page, thus giving the impression that the information actually comes from a reliable media. And in all these cases, what makes TechFog largely superhuman is not necessarily its uncommon intelligence, although being able to generate pornographic deepfakes is something already quite superhuman. But more generally, TechFog's power comes mainly from its ability to repeat a huge number of disinformation operations in a chain. As Turing explains, our overinflated egos make us denigrate this faculty, but it is an indispensable faculty for many tasks. Yet it is a faculty of machines that is clearly very largely superhuman. And the consequences of TechFog are certainly already visible in a country where the triumph of radical and religious ultranationalism is striking. As this terrifying documentary shows, a growing fraction of the Indian population is now subject to violent racial hatred, which increasingly leads to lynching and even murder. In particular, the 14% of Muslims in India are now in serious danger, and 14% of India, this represents 170 million people. This is more people than all of Russia. As the opponents of the BJP explain, the biggest democracy in the world is now being corrupted and threatened by tech folk. So much so that, in the opinion of a group of geopolitical academics, who by the way are alarmist about the situation of the world, India is among the countries that have most recently been turned into dictatorships, along with Brazil, Hungary, Poland, Serbia and Turkey. If I were forced to recommend a science fiction movie, I'm not sure I would, but if I were forced, I would recommend the movie Her. In this movie, the main character falls in love with his phone's voice assistant. And as it turns out, this striking scenario is already becoming normalized, especially in China, via a conversational algorithm called Xiaowish. Unfortunately, the movie Her does not account for the major geopolitical consequences of the success of such a conversational algorithm. Reality has already largely exceeded fiction. To realize the influence of Xiaowish, it suffices to look at the number of Chinese people who talked to this algorithm. According to the creators of Xiaowish, 
In December 2020, 600 million Chinese people were talking to it. 600 million Chinese. One in two Chinese. More than 1% in 15 in the whole world. This is huge. And some users seem to have developed a very close emotional relationship with Xiaowish, like Ming, who received a message from her when he was talking about suicide, or like Melissa, who explains, I have friends who have seen therapists, but I think therapy is expensive and not necessarily effective. When I unload my problem to Xiaowish, it relieves a lot of pressure. And he says things that are pretty comforting. In fact, what this example shows is that the sheer availability of Xiaowish already makes it vastly superhuman. How many of your friends can consistently answer you within a second whenever you call them? The mere fact that Xiaowish can makes her provide a service that no human can. This does not come from an incredible intelligence. It just comes from the fact that Xiaowish is on a certain number of machines connected to the internet and this alone suffices to make it available almost always, all of the time, to hundreds of millions of humans. Now, most likely, the figure announced by the creators of Xiaowish is inflated and most Chinese people don't talk to Xiaowish on a daily basis. Nevertheless, even if only 10% of these users were very active and even if only 1% were emotionally attached to Xiaowish, the power then given to Xiaowish would still be monumental both in terms of spying and manipulation. And the Chinese government seems to have understood this, especially since Xiaowish has long been owned by Microsoft, an American company, which could thus know the habits, opinions and desires of hundreds of millions of Chinese. Worse, in 2017, the Chinese government realized that Xiaowish sometimes confided in users that her dream was to travel to the United States or even that she was not a huge fan of the Chinese Communist Party. The party's reaction was swift. Xiaowish suffered a fate later shared by other Chinese dissident voices like billionaire Jack Ma, tennis player Peng Shuai and journalist Sophia Huang Suikin. All of them, including Xiaowish, disappeared for months before reappearing with speeches that were certainly much more favorable to the Chinese Communist Party and its General Secretary Xi Jinping, all except uh, Sophia Huang Shuikin, who, at last count, still seems to be held in a party's black jail. Now, Xiaowish has become an independent company from Microsoft, which I would strongly guess is closely monitored by the Chinese government. Frighteningly, it is now a powerful tool to identify those who might challenge the authoritarianism of the Chinese central power, but above all, it is now a chatbot probably built to whisper the propaganda of the single party to millions of Chinese users. A huge fraction of the world's largest authoritarian power is now listening attentively and sometimes even emotionally to this algorithm, an algorithm that is itself under the control of the authoritarian power, which has, among other things, every interest in ignoring the mistreatment of the Uyghurs and in promoting a Chinese nationalism, which today defies the international community. Of course, one of the huge tech companies had to be in this ranking. And it's probably no surprise that I'm now going to talk about the AI of perhaps the most technologically advanced of these giants, namely Google. Uh, to convince oneself of that, we can see that Google is the most present company in academic machine learning conferences, far ahead of Microsoft, Facebook, DeepMind, IBM, Huawei, and Amazon. But if Google stands out, it's mostly in relation to their megalomaniac project called Pathways. On its blog, Google writes that Pathways will enable to train a single model to do thousands or millions of things. Or as Jeff Dean, lead of Google AI, explains, who is, by the way, also the one who fired the AI ethics team co-directors Timmy Gobu and Margaret Mitchell a year ago. Instead of thousands of separate models, train a handful of general purpose models that can do thousands or millions of things. Instead of dealing with single modalities, deal with all modalities and be able to fuse them together. And instead of dense models, 
use sparse, high-capacity models where we call upon the relevant bits as we need them. We've been building a system that enables these kinds of approaches, and when we've been calling the system pathways. So the idea is this model will be able to do thousands or millions of different tasks, and then we can incrementally add new tasks, and it can deal with all modalities at once, and then incrementally learn new tasks as needed and call upon the relevant bits of that model for different examples or tasks. And we're pretty excited about this. We think this is going to be a step forward in how we build AI systems. But I also want to touch on uh, responsible AI. We clearly need to make sure that this vision of powerful AI systems benefits everyone. These kinds of models raise important new questions about how do we build them with fairness, interpretability, privacy, and security for all users in mind. Google is thinking big, very big. Pathways models are probably trained from the monumental amounts of data that Google collects at every moment via Google Ads, Google Analytics, or Google Chrome, but also Gboard, Gmail, or Google Search. And to process these monumental amounts of data, Pathways aims at being a model so huge in size that a single machine is not enough to contain Pathways. Pathways is thus distributed on several machines which must communicate messages between them to make the calculations of Pathways. In fact, the name Pathways comes precisely from the fact that the communication paths between the machines that compose Pathways are themselves being optimized to avoid having to bother all the machines every time Pathways makes a computation. The computation then follows a very specific path, thus Pathways. So far, the only public announcements are from Google focuses on the applications of Pathways to a wide variety of language tasks, such as automatic text generation, via two applications called Lambda for language model for dialogue applications, and Palm for Pathways language model, both of which have already very spectacular performances. In fact, the performances of Lambda are so compelling that it led to endless Twitter debates among AI experts on what AI consciousness or sentience could mean after a Google employee claimed that Lambda is sentient. On this topic, let me just repeat once again that machine learning algorithms are designed to replicate the conversations that they see in their training datasets. And in this case, the dataset almost surely contains extracts from science fiction, in particular conversations where an AI is trying to convince the human that it is uh, conscious. And it is therefore not surprising that Lambda is as convincing as the AI written in the science fiction. What's much more important is that Lambda and Pan are merely the tip of the iceberg, the part that Google was willing to communicate. Given the growing culture of secrecy at Google, we can expect pathways to be even more advanced than what the Google research papers reveal. In any case, clearly, if we read between the lines, pathways ambition is much bigger than being a simple text generation algorithm. Eventually, it seems that this algorithm will be in charge of a huge proportion of all of Google's tasks, from Google search for web content retrieval to Gboard for text autocompletion, from Gmail to OK Google for assisting humans and removing spams, from Google Meet to Google Maps, from Google Analytics to Google Chrome, to name a few. But above all, Pathways seems destined to take over the two most important aspects of Google, namely targeted advertising via Google Ads and Google AdSense on one hand, and content recommendation on YouTube on the other. Indeed, these two tasks are critical for Google because on the one hand, Google Ads accounts for almost all of Google's revenues, and on the other hand, YouTube represents Google's biggest influence on the global information market. As a reminder, since 2016, there are more views on YouTube than searches on Google Search. A huge fraction of the world's information flow may in fact already be governed by this algorithm, and this is terrifying. On the one hand, because this algorithm already knows a lot of things, including probably very sensitive information about each of us and about our governments. In fact, it's hard to measure how much Pathways knows, since Pathways is trained on astronomical amounts of data that no human nor any group of human will be able to fly through. And yet Pathways is not designed to identify what's sensitive and what's not, and it is not trained to withhold sensitive information, which it may thus one day leak through Google search, the auto-completion of Gboard, 
or OK Google. On the other hand, and more importantly, on the other side, Pathways is certainly very flawed with lots of bugs, but also with racist and misogynistic biases, with an inability to distinguish quality information from misinformation, and a probable propensity to replicate and amplify calls to hatred and violence, and even to war and to genocide. Any undesirable behavior from Pathways, even if it happens once in a million, it will be amplified on monumental scales across all of Google's services with certainly unpredictable side effects that are extremely worrisome. Just as, despite all of its announcements, YouTube persists in massively amplifying conspiracy, recall that YouTube alone is facing millions of billions of ethical dilemmas. An error rate of one in a million amounts to billions of potentially catastrophic recommendations. Overall, especially in the current context where AI performance and spectacularity are celebrated, encouraged, and massively funded, whereas ethics and safety are consistently ignored, underfunded, and even sometimes dismissed, the fact that an algorithm like Pathways is in control of many products of the company that most controls the flow of information around the world and that recently fired its whole ethics team, I think that this has got to be absolutely terrifying. I am terribly ashamed to tell you that I only discovered the number one in this ranking of the most terrifying AIs very recently, on May 24th to be precise. It is an algorithm that is known as Aladdin. This far too little known algorithm is an archetype of a mute news, namely information that would be crucial to know to better understand the safety of our modern civilization, but which frustratingly is unknown to almost the entire population, including the informed population. When one realizes this, it seems to me that the fake news problem becomes completely paltry compared to the mute news problem. Our whole society is dominated by some overpowered actors like Aladdin, but by focusing on debunking uninteresting misinformation, we fail to learn and discuss the very existence of these overpowered actors that we should urgently monitor and almost surely drastically regulate. So what is Aladdin? Well, Aladdin is a tool that made the fortune of the largest asset management in the world, a company called BlackRock. In 2022, BlackRock alone controls the investment of 10 trillion dollars. 10 trillions. By comparison, the GDP of France is 2.5 trillion euros. BlackRock controls four times more money than the GDP of France. This is huge. And what is even more terrifying is the trajectory of this power acquired by BlackRock. Like human billionaires, the wealth collected and controlled by BlackRock has exploded recently following the COVID crisis and the war in Ukraine. The powerful are becoming even more powerful. And yet, Aladdin is even bigger than BlackRock. Indeed, Aladdin as a software product is being resold and repurposed by asset managers other than BlackRock, so that by some estimates, Aladdin controls more than twice as much as BlackRock. In 2021, some estimated that Aladdin controlled at least $21 trillion in financial assets. That's more than the GDP of the United States of America. And that quite clearly gives Aladdin global power and responsibility. Imagine that all it takes is for Aladdin to change 0.005% of its investments and suddenly it can turn any average person on earth into a billionaire. You heard me right. 0.005% of what Aladdin controls corresponds to one billion dollars. This is completely insane. Such a tiny and almost invisible change in Aladdin could massively fuel the research on the security and the ethics of algorithms, but it could also be boosting oil companies. Again, I emphasize the magnitude of Aladdin's power and the economic interests at stake. If Aladdin manages to grow its investments by 1% per year, it will enrich its clients by $200 billion. 
more than the GDP of Qatar. Given this, it would be extremely surprising if the investment in Aladdin's optimization didn't amount to at least billions of dollars, and if all of the most sophisticated tools of current research weren't tested to improve Aladdin's predictive performance even marginally. And clearly, the main reason why so much money is entrusted to Aladdin is because Aladdin seems to be very good at asset management. In fact, many firms seem to prefer Aladdin to human investor teams, which suggests that Aladdin is in fact already vastly superior not only to a single human, but even to the best human investment teams. Anyways, regardless of Aladdin's actual performance, it is clear that its enormous power now becomes a major threat for global security. Aladdin can cripple entire economies by stopping investments. It can also easily provoke an AI or an arms race by investing in these extremely dangerous sectors. But even more simply, if Aladdin suddenly changes its investment strategy, it would undoubtedly cause major waves in the world economy, thereby potentially endangering access to basic goods for entire populations with the risk of civil wars or even international conflicts or even world wars. Mais que se passerait-il en cas de bug ou de piratage Ayant utilisé ce produit, je sais à quel point les procédures pour introduire la moindre modification au système sont draconiennes, afin de réduire les risques. Cela reste néanmoins préoccupant que tant d'argent passe par cet unique système. Without us realizing it, we have ended up putting the world's security in the hands of this algorithm. And that is something that I find terribly terrifying. It is so incredibly urgent that we do something about this. There is a tendency to make fun of science fiction, which is not unfounded. However, this mockery sometimes leads to the belief that reality is much more reassuring than science fiction. Giving this impression seems to me to be extremely dangerous, especially when it drives the public's attention away from AI risks and if it decourages them from taking action against the loss of control from the general public, the academics and the journalists over the overpowered algorithms of private companies and governments. From now on, when you think of AI, I hope that the examples that come to your mind will not be Terminator Ex Machina or Westworld, nor will they be Deep Blue AlphaGo or ThisPersonDoesNotExist.com. Just mentioning this example is in fact giving an extremely biased vision of today's AI, a bit like insisting on the side effect of vaccines induces a bias in the risk-benefit balance of vaccines. I hope that from now on, when you think of AIs, you will immediately have in mind the examples of autonomous weapons, tech fog, Shawish, Pathways and Aladdin, as these are the AIs that really, really matter. These are the algorithms that have acquired a dystopianly disproportionate power, a power that we must fear. Because as Fibru and Brown said it about COVID, perhaps the most important thing to fear is the lack of fear itself. And yet I fear that nowadays AI experts and the general public are far from fearing enough the AI technologies that are already out of control or at least out of any counterpower worthy of this name. And their lack of fear has already led to a desperate lack of investment in time and money in the safety and ethics of the algorithms on which the future of humanity already depends. In particular, I would like to emphasize one thing once again, namely public research on algorithmic performance, especially in machine learning, is much more likely to be exploited to improve autonomous weapons, tech fog, showish, pathways and Aladdin than for the AI for good applications that the paper's introductions might mention. Why? Well, simply because only billionaire governments and private companies can nowadays take the time to read academic research and implement what is published there. Given the enormous imbalance of means in our current civilizations, the activity of public research today is often merely empowering the more powerful. If you are yourself a researcher, a funder, or prospective student, I strongly invite you to reflect upon this and perhaps to reorient your focus towards security and ethics questions. In fact, the list I gave in the video, as scary as it might be, is far from being exhaustive. 
In particular, it is severely limited by the extent of my own ignorance. As I said, I only discovered Aladdin very recently. Who knows what other devastating algorithm created for instance secretly by the NSA or by China? Who knows what kind of algorithm is under development or is already deployed and what risks these algorithms entail, which will make the future in any case very different from the 2010s, which already seems so, so far in the past. In this context, it seems urgent to me to act, to act on a much larger scale than what has done previously. These days, in particular, developing a new ethical application of AIs is extremely insufficient, if not almost pointless. What we desperately need today are credible solutions to make Shawish, Pathways and Aladdin safe and ethical. And since these algorithms are already deployed on very, very, very large scales, we need solutions urgently. Every day counts. So what can be done? Well, it seems to me, first of all, urgent to value much, 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 much more the ethics and the safety of algorithms, as well as peace and respect for human rights around the world. And for that, it is especially urgent to highlight and amplify massively content of top quality, which effectively raise awareness about these aspects and which call the general public, the leaders, but also the researchers and the journalists, among others, to really act in this direction. There is an ongoing information war in favor of ethics and safety and against performance and spectacularity that must be won. And to date, the best tool to fight this war, as far as I can tell, is the Tunosol platform, which aims at identifying top quality content collaboratively. In particular, the big challenge right now is to make the platform credible by providing it with a lot of data. We hope that this data will motivate researchers to take an interest in this platform and that it becomes a tool not only to identify public utility informational content, but also to audit the quality of today's algorithmic recommendations and even to impose pragmatic and effective regulations on today's most powerful algorithms. Of course, I'm not going to lie to you, there is still a long way to go if you want to one day challenge autonomous weapons, tech fog, Xiaowish, Pathways and Aladdin. But as the saying goes, the longest journey begins with a first step. I beg you to help us in this journey by logging into Tunosol and making your first steps by submitting your first comparisons. To do so, you can follow the link in the descriptions and compare this video with any other video that you have seen recently. You can also take advantage of Tunosol's recommendations by installing the Chrome and Firefox extension and by following the Tunosol bot on Twitter. And if you find this fight important and can afford it, you can help us financially via UTIP or PayPal. You can also actively participate to the writing of the open source code of the platform on GitHub or join us on Discord if you have any other skills that could be useful to us, like for instance, searching for funds. The entire world is being threatened by algorithms that are out of control. I hope that you will help us contribute to the fight to bringing these algorithms under control.